Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Okay, so this is just going to be a vlogging type of video, right? Something I do want to kind of do a little bit more going forward, but yeah, this time I'm going to be talking about uh, Dark Souls mostly. <laughs> like, uh, I recently played Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls Remastered. I never played the any of the previous versions, like Prepare to Die Edition or the original version. The, pretty much the remastered version was my introduction into it, right? So, uh, yeah, Dark Souls. I didn't really know anything about it until I got into it. Pretty much the only thing I knew was that it had a reputation for being very difficult, you know, and uh, when people asked for advice, they were told to get good. That was generally consensus advice given. And uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to die a lot, you know. Those are pretty much the only thing I knew. Like, I vaguely understood that you wore armor and had weapons and stuff, but that, I mean, a lot of games are like that. But uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what I knew, so I went into it. And uh, I mean, the very first boss you fight, you pretty much don't have a weapon, right? So uh, I died to him a lot until I, until I finally realized that there is there was a door. There is there's somewhere you're supposed to go. You're you're not supposed to fight him yet, you know. Which is a lesson I probably should have more internalized when I was first presented with it because that became relevant a little bit later in the game. But uh, yeah, you you get out of there. You get yourself a slightly better weapon. You, you come back and you, you you jump on top of him. You know. If you wait too long, he, he comes for you. So, again, more more lessons learned there. But, uh, yeah, I, I think I died to him after that maybe once or twice. But I, I got him down, you know. He wasn't he wasn't too tough. Right? And then you get to go to the, the real area, right? Like, uh, I want to say it's called the Fire Link Shrine. Something like that. But the, the, the hub area, right? So, uh, you know... That's 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 pretty much the real beginning of the game, right? Before that, it was just kind of the uh, the, the, the tutorial. So, so uh, yeah, what did I do first after I got there? Well, I mean, I wasn't quite sure where to go, so I found some nice goodies, some chests, getting pretty excited, and then I like fell down into an area that was like uh, like a graveyard. So, and yeah, this is where I pretty much explained that uh, a lot of the kind of noob traps that the game has. I fell into most of them, I think that's fair to say. Like, I was not I was not good at the game at all. Like, the get good advice was something I definitely needed to to get to, right? But, uh, yeah, because I went to the graveyard, which I later found out was not where you're supposed to go first, uh, generally. Like, I know speedrunners and stuff will go there first to uh, snag some quick loot and everything, right? So there's some value in that, but, like... As a complete beginner, you're, you're probably not supposed to go there. Like, because I went there. And, I, and they're skeletons, so I figured, yeah, this is probably a low-level enemy. Like, th this is probably fine. And I died a lot. They, they, they just kept killing me, right? You know? And it kind of sucked, so... But I just I just kept going back there. Like I said, the, the lesson that you're supposed to internalize about sometimes you're not supposed to fight something just yet, you're supposed to come back to it later, the lesson that you kind of get from the first boss... I didn't get that, you know, I, I did not get that lesson until I died one too many times and had to go Google, like, these damn skeletons that keep killing me in this game, I, I don't know what to do, I'm gonna throw my controller against the wall, P -p please help, and that's when I learned, like, yeah, you, you, no, you, you, don't, you don't do that yet, there's this other area you go to, and then I'm like, yeah, there's not an area over there, then I actually go look, oh yeah, there is like a, a thing, I, I can walk over there, that is a place I can go, so I went over there, and I died significantly less, I still died, because it's still Dark Souls, the monsters will still try to kill you. It's just quite rude of them, actually. But, um, but you know, I slowly was making progress in that direction. <laughs> like, it seemed reasonable that I could that I could fight this stuff, but still dying a lot because the combat is very slow, very deliberate. Like, you can't just wail your way to victory on these things. They, they, they will kill you, and then and, and they do. But, uh, yeah, pretty much following that path, dying a lot to eventually get into, you know, bonfire... Making more and more progress, but uh, eventually you get to the, the the first like boss, which I want to say was the gargoyles, right? I got to the area after a while, but um, yeah, that I died so many times. I don't. I think I lost track at a certain point. The gargoyles were just so brutal, and that's when I learned about one of the real enemies of Dark Souls, which is the the run back to the bosses. Like, good God, that is just insufferable. Cause like, if you're a, you're a noob, you're a beginner, you're gonna die a lot. You know, and every time you die, you don't just, like, pop up right outside the door and then walk back in. No, you go back to the, to the bonfire. You have to get by the enemies and the gargoyle. I think there was, like... Because uh, uh, the nearest bonfire was, like, a thing in, like, the tower area near the blacksmith. And you gotta go... So you gotta go past the regular enemies. You gotta go upstairs. You gotta go past the just small army of hollows that just come at you. You gotta deal with all that. And climb up all the stairs and get to... And get to the boss, right? So every time I died, that's what I had to do. And it's not like, 
you know, you, you you fight this epic battle for five minutes and then finally lose. Like, I would usually die within, like, the first five to ten seconds, at least for my first, you know, dozen or so attempts. So that was uh, that was the worst. If I had to think, think one, if I had to say the biggest criticism I have of Dark Souls, it was it's the boss runbacks. Because there's nothing wrong with having hard bosses and everything, but, like, you, you, can't, you can't be doing that. You have to respect the player's time a bit more than that. But, um... Eventually, again, after doing some research after I died too many times, I realized that yeah, you, there's a uh, there's NPCs you can summon to uh, to help you to help you out, right? And once they did that, it became significantly easier. Like I think I did it the first time after I actually summoned some um, some backup. So so that was nice, you know. I felt like I died more times than I needed to because I could have just done that from the beginning. But <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that that, that kind of sucked. <laughs> but as far as bosses, I think that was one of the ones I had the most difficulty with. But See what was the next one after that? Okay, I went to look at the list of bosses to kind of refresh myself, and yeah, I think the Taurus, the Taurus demon was before that. Him, I didn't have too much difficulty with. Like, obviously, I died a few times until I looked up. Like, yeah, there's a ladder. You, you can you can climb it, and you can like, you know, pl 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 plunge on him from there. <laughs> Once I learned that, like, you know, that wasn't a difficult fight at all. That was just kind of like I think a plunging attack tutorial, so that wasn't too bad. But like, so the gargoyles was really the biggest thing I had trouble with. Like the moonlight butterfly, I died maybe two or three times too. The hardest part for me was just dodging his attacks with, you know, that one of my big, one of my big problems with the game I forgot to mention was probably the, the fat rolling. Like I didn't understand back to the topic of like uh, new mis many new mistakes made. I did not understand the weight the, the, and what that causes to you, the capacity and the result in fat rolling and how bad fat rolling is. Like, you know, I definitely got better at the game once I realized that stuff. But, um, yeah, so as a result, I had a little bit of trouble dodging the, this Pewee Pewees from the butterfly, but, you know, not, not too bad. The Capra Demon, that was the next one that was like a really big issue <laughs> and I had to end up cheesing him because, like, you walk in there, he, there's this guy, I guess the developers thought, you know, this is too easy, let's throw a bunch of, throw a couple dots in there that'll you know shake things up a little bit but uh, yeah that was just the worst man <laughs> but uh, so in the end I just ended up having to cheese that one you know again looking up videos to just chuck firebombs over the fence so uh, that one just uh, just uh, nope I was not having it that one was just the worst that was not fun at all so I had to kind of skip that one with a cheesing method but aside from that the money most of the bosses after that were not too bad like, uh, the wolf, I think, only took me a couple tries. I think I only died once and beat it the, the second time. Let's see. But, uh, yeah, even Quaylock, I think, only died maybe two or three times before I beat her. But the next one that was, like, a real, real problem for me was Ornstein and Smo. I know those two are very, like, iconic bosses for Dark Souls 1, and they are just insanely hard, right? Like, th this is where my journey really took a, took a pause, took a almost ended right because um you, this area you get to it like i think like birds or gargoyles or some creature i think like takes you to this area uh, that's the area for those bosses and like you're in some strange new land you don't know how to get home right but i somehow managed to navigate myself to the bosses and as far as the topic of boss run backs man that was just the worst like I think there were like multiple silver knight guys and that that you had to get past, which I had a lot of difficulty with, especially the one I think he had like a spear or something. He just killed me so many times. Like the one with the sword wasn't that bad, it's had to be patient mostly, had a decent success rate. But the spear guy killed me a lot. And those weren't even the worst part of the run back. No, it was these big soldiers that were right at the boss entrance. They killed me a lot. They were big, they hit hard, they could like AoE, they could heal. I hated them with a passion, so they were the, they were a big problem. But yeah, Ornstein and Smo, like, I, <laughs> I don't even have the words to describe how just BS those guys are. Like, because Dark Souls isn't that bad, but you can like 1v1 someone. You can keep a good eye on them, keep them, watch their attacks, dodge when you need to, block if that's a better option. It's not that bad. But then you have Ornstein and Smo that are like a team. You know, one of them smashes really hard, the other like charges and shoots lightning and stuff. Like, when, when I was, this was when I was pre-get good. So I just, I couldn't deal with that. I died so many times. But, you know, I realized that there is, there was an NPC summon you could do to make, to make it easier. And, but the problem was that that requires you to like use your humanity, essentially, right? And uh, I'm in a strange, strange land. I don't know how to get back. I don't know how to get more humanity. I, had a, I have a limited amount of this, so every time I tried to use the NPC method, uh, it was a ticking clock. I, I, I could only do it so many times, right? And that was only part of the problem. The other problem is, like, if I summon him, 
I have to kill the other enemies that are in that area, otherwise he'll fight them and, you know, presumably lose HP on that before you even get into the real fight. So, so doing that, basically I couldn't just run past the enemies, which, which was mostly what I was doing to fight Orange Seed Smo, just sprinting past them all to, to, to fight them, right? That was most, most of my attempts for that. But whenever I wanted to do the NPC summon, I had to actually make sure to kill everything, and I had a pretty low success rate of even even killing the big guys at the gate. And even when I did, like, usually at least half my Estus is just gone by that point. So I'm not in a good shape to, to fight the enemy. Again, the enemy that I have a limited amount of times to do this with, because I have a limited amount of humanity. So, like, this was kind of the point in the game where I got very close to giving up, right? Because I didn't really have the time to get good before I was going to just, yeah, lose all my humanity and not be able to do the NPC summons. Just have to try it on my own, which was doubtful I could actually do that. Because it's a lot easier if I have someone to kind of like tank for me. But yeah, there's definitely a low point. Like I almost quit the game. So I did the unspeakable and I cheated. I downloaded a mod that re that heavily reduced the damage I took to get past the fight and just move on. You know, I hated it. I felt dirty doing it. But that, it was, I got to the point where I was either going to do that or I was going to quit the game. So as a result, even though I did get to the end of the game in the end, like, I don't feel like I truly beat the game and I will definitely go back at some point because I do think I could have a much better time against them now that I've gotten semi, borderline semi-ish good, uh, but now because, because looking back on it, I think I just didn't even have a very good weapon at that time, but, um, anyway... Once I did that, I got past Ornstein and Smo, and I was actually kind of, I had a walkthrough, like, at the side to reference whenever I, like, truly got stuck. And that walkthrough mentioned that Ornstein and Smo was very much a skill check, and that, you know, if you can't beat these guys, you can't beat what, what comes ahead of them and all that. And I believed that at the time, but, like, I at least wanted to give the future stuff a chance, you know? But it definitely got me pretty concerned, but, like, it shouldn't have. Like, I, like, I'm not exaggerating when I say that one. After I got past Ornstein and Smo, I didn't really have trouble with any other boss. Like, no, I, I think most of them I beat in the first try. Like, there may have been maybe one or two bosses that I died once to, but for the most part, like, they were not. And, like, the, like the Centipede Demon, I know I died to him, I think, at least once. But, um... Set the Scales, I may have died to him once, but, um... But yeah, most even the final boss, Gwyn, I think is called, like, I beat him in one try. Even the one DLC boss, uh, what was his name? Hopefully it's on this list somewhere. Yeah, Artorias, which was I was told was pretty difficult. I only died to him once. And the Dragon Colomy, whatever, whatever he's called, I did not die to him a single time. I beat him first try. So, yeah, like, the line about or or uh, Ornstein and Smo being, like, this, you know, it only gets harder from here. I did not find that true at all. Even the Four Kings, I beat it on the first try. Again, I think a lot of this does have to do with I had a much better weapon that properly utilized the, you know, my strength to build, like really good strength scaling. I think that had a lot to do with it. I think it may have just had a crappy weapon during that fight and that may have skewed things for me. But like, I really did not have much trouble at all after the Ornstein and Smo fight. So to the point where it just felt really weird to me. <laughs> like, I do, I definitely do want to go back and play the game again from scratch. Knowing what I know now, actually being good, good-ish. Like, I've seen real good Dark Souls players in videos. Like, I, I can't call myself good, but like, semi-competent. I think we could call myself that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, definitely, definitely was interesting. Yeah, Nito was pretty scary, but once again, I beat him first try. So, you know, I heard something about how Dark Souls bosses were made somewhat, e you know, easy, more easy than certain, certain other Souls games because it, because uh, the player does have a lot of agency in how they build their character, and you know, so like it kind of has to accommodate multi many methods to win. If that makes sense, like heard something about that. But uh, yeah, so far Dark Souls One has been my only Souls-like game. I, I may have forgotten to mention that at the beginning, but uh, yeah, that's my first Souls-type game. I definitely do want to get into more uh, for sure. Like I have Sekiro in my Steam library. I definitely want to check that out so soon. And uh, Code of Vein as well. I think I've heard that's kind of Souls-like, but. Because that was gifted to me from a friend a while ago. I think I played a little bit of it, but never really got, like, really got into it. But um, I definitely will at some point as well. But yeah, I mostly just talked about the the bosses of Dark Souls, but I should probably try to, you know, go into more stuff than that. But yeah, one thing that definitely stood out to me in the game was just the, the level design, or rather the, the overall world design, right? Like, because um, there's not really a lot of backer music in the game. You know, you have your hub area that has a very you know, nice little music to it. But, uh, but one really cool thing about that is that, 
you know, you go explore somewhere, you're like deeper and deeper in enemy territory, you know, you're getting lost and confused, you're not quite sure where you are, you know, it's a long journey back, and then you find some little thing here and you go down that path, then suddenly, bam, you're back at the Firelink Shrine. You know, you're back home to safety, that music kicks in, you feel safe and comforted again. Well, relatively, like that's the safest place you're going to find in this world. I mean, it's still not super safe, you could actually hint at it, hit an NPC and they will... They hold a grudge, man. They, they, they'll see you. They'll attack you. They, they don't they don't care. Luckily, I didn't, never made the mistake of accidentally hitting someone. But uh, I've seen YouTube videos where people did that, and they sometimes got pretty salty about it. But, um, yeah. So so very, very cool the way everything does connect like that, for sure. You know, you can even go to, like, like Blight Town example has, like, a back entrance you could, you could go through, which is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, also just the design of areas in general. Blight Town, of course, really cool. Like, it's this very wooden, I'm not even sure the best way to describe it is, but very, like, makeshift, packed together, very unsafe, rickety sort of thing. Like, you know where you would want to actually live, but very interesting environments to, like, stumble upon and explore. Like, you could really feel there's a story behind this, like how it came to be, the people that live here. Definitely something you could think about, but uh, yeah, that was one of the places that really stood out to me the most in the game, probably for, like most iconic area. But, but uh, yeah, also just the way you keep going down and down and down in the game, like you find an area, you go down, like wow, I must be getting close to the bottom of the world, and then you, just, you find a big hole, you realize, oh, you know, it's not the it's not the bottom at all. It, it just keeps going right because at the beginning of the game, you're kind of like going up. You see the sky above you. It seems pretty normal so far. Then you get to the point where you just you go down and down and down, and you, you just wonder how far down it gets, and you're expecting to see the devil himself any minute now. So that was I, I also I also the words. I also thought that was really cool, definitely. But. Uh, also, just the overall atmosphere of the game really is not a not a happy one. It is called Dark Souls, and I think as far as the name goes, the atmosphere fits the title pretty well, I would say. One thing the game is very good at is making sure you never get too cocky. Like, there are games where you play them, you know, you're at the beginning area, you struggle, you know, maybe a little bit to defeat the enemies there, but you come back ten hours later, you one-shot them, they're a joke to you. Dark Souls never really gets that way. Like, um, you know, I, I got pretty beefy at a certain point, you know, I figured I could just run past the beginning area, you know, s smacking those enemies left and right like they're a joke, and they, they still killed me. They, they didn't care about my 50 strength stat and my fancy big sword with plus 15 on it. Like, you know, if I could hit them with it, sure, I would probably kill them one or two shots, but like, if they hit you first and they hit you 17 times, or at least three or four, and... By the time you smack them, another one comes from behind you, hits you two or three more times, you're just dead. You know? You might have a huge amount more damage output than them, but they don't care. They just they just they just get hit you so fast and so they can they can come out of nowhere sometimes too, which is like not paying attention, you know. But uh so yeah, the game never lets you get too cocky, right? So very kind of like realistic in that sense, you know, like even if in real life you were a badass with a sword and everything like that, if three dudes come up, you come up to you with, with knives, even if they're not, even if they're not like trained at all, they could probably still kill you, especially if one of them sneaks up on you, right? So like, it's, it's, it feels very real, realistic in that sense. So kind of opposite of maybe some kind of power fantasy you might want to get in some games, like uh, what's the one kind of game called Dynasty Warriors? Is that what it is? But uh, some kind of game where you like, you know, you can defeat dozens of warriors like it's nothing, you know, definitely kind of the opposite of that, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, one thing I really felt as I was as I was playing the game is just, it really gives you this feeling that other games just baby you. <laughs> they treat you like a child. Like, recently on the internet, I've been seeing people complain about, like, um, what they call yellow paint. So uh, making sure the player knows where to go, right? Don't want to give them a chance to fail or to take a few extra seconds to realize where they're supposed to go, right? Games that are very much based off of the lowest common denominator, like they have their, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, focus groups, right? Where they just try to like make sure the maximum amount of people can play the game without getting frustrated and refunding it. Like just pandering to that lowest common denominator, just trying to get those sales numbers up. Right, they don't feel like they're made by gamers for gamers the same way Dark Souls is. Like some people get it mad when people give the just get good response, and it definitely is overused. Sometimes when it doesn't apply, like sometimes people will bring up a legitimate 
poor design, you know, poor poor mechanic decision, and just respond with get good, where it doesn't really reply, apply there. But aside, but aside from that, like, it really is how it is. Like, the game does not, isn't going to just give you yellow paint. It's going to give you enemies that are hard to kill, that you have to kill. They have to treat a certain way. You have to pay attention to their movements. You have to know how to deal with them, and you have to, to do it, you know? They're not just going to be like, oh, no, I turned around to pick up a penny. I hope nobody stabs me from behind while I'm picking that up. You know, a bit of an exaggeration there, but you know what I mean, right? The game <laughs> expects a certain degree of skill from you, and if you don't have it, you, you can't progress. You know, obviously that screwed me over during the Ornstein and Stein. I, I hope I'm not messing up their names. Uh, obviously that messed me up, you know, because I was getting too frustrated, you know, didn't, uh, you know, that I ended up not getting good for that fight in particular. But, um, but that was on me. Not, that's not the game's fault, really. Like, the, the, the fight's probably not as hard as I remember it being. You know, I probably will go back to it at some point and not understand why I struggled with it as much as I did. That will probably happen. But, um, but yeah, even though it did, you know, filter me a little bit, I guess you, I guess you could call it that, I definitely still respect the game for that if, that, if that makes sense. I also appreciate the way that you can build your character different ways. Like, if you want to swing around a big sword, you can do that. If you want to have, like, a dagger with, you know, poisoning, you, you can do that, too. You can shoot spells like you, you, there's some real variety there, which is which is pretty cool. I just went for swinging around a big heavy sword. It seemed pre pretty straightforward to me. Just just whack the enemy. But um, also you, also you wanna you can you can block things with your shield or you can dodge them with rolling, like whichever one appeals to you more. I mean, there's probably some attacks where blocking with your shield is just not realistic. But for most stuff, yeah, you could just have your big great shield and just do that. You know, if we give up the stats relevant to that high enough. Uh, but, um, yes, my cat decided to, uh, to join me here, but, um, yeah, as far as criticisms of the game go, I don't really have too many, uh, like I said, the boss runbacks is definitely the biggest one, without question, I heard that that got better in later games, at least Elden Ring, I think I heard, doesn't have that issue as much, but, and Dark Souls 2, of course, has a thing where, like, after a, a, a enemy dies a certain amount of times, it stops respawning, which is, uh, somewhat of a solution to that like not really because by the time you get to that point you're already pretty frustrated but you know at least for the people that die 50 times the same boss that that, that will help but really a better solution would just be have some kind of bonfire in, in a better spot that of course would be the the best solution but speaking of bonfires the other big thing was of course the lack of fast travel like you have to actually get past Ornstein and Smo to be able to do any of that and when you are able to do that, some of that, you can't even do it to all bonfires, right? And that's probably part of my issue is I couldn't go back and farm humanity stuff because I hadn't yet unlocked fast travel, which I don't unlock until I beat Ornstein this moment, which is a thing I couldn't do. So that's why I got caught in that, that kind of loop there. So yeah, but again, that's a problem that was solved in Dark Souls 2. So again, uh, something, some, some improvements for later, for later games. So, but the other than that, I really don't have too much in the way of uh, criticism like obviously the game could be a little bit more uh what's the best word for what i'm looking for transparent or like it can make the game mechanics a bit more clear to the player like beyond what basic buttons do you know it doesn't tell you too much so you do have to kind of like go to the wiki and get a feel for things like the wave system and how that affects the rolling and stats and what that does and like a lot of things like that you do kind of have to consult the internet if you want a good understanding of that stuff but you know that's one of those things that only really affects the the new the new new players once you actually get into the game it's no longer a negative for you if that makes sense so that one's not too big of a deal especially in the age of internet and wiki culture and all that so it's not too bad but worth mentioning as a, as a criticism but yeah this is really really meant to be a review i just kind of like I finished playing the game, I had a lot of thoughts just in my head that I wanted to communicate in some fashion, and as it turns out, I have a YouTube channel, so, you know, maybe a few people would be semi-interested in that, because there got to be some Dark Souls fans in my in my audience, right, that uh, want to hear someone that's kind of new to it talk about it, but, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed my, enjoyed my time with it. There's plenty of frustrating moments, plenty of times where I got lost. Or fell off. Because gravity is the, the worst boss of, of Dark Souls, for sure. You know, you die, you lose your souls, you, you break something, you, you get back into it. So, there's definitely some, some frustrations with that. But it does just kind of, like, add to the overall sense of accomplishment. <laughs> and happiness when you finally do get, get past it all and able to fight the boss and defeat it. 
Like, very few games really make it make you feel like you really accomplished something the same way Dark Souls does, you know. Like, I've played plenty of Zelda games, and they're, and they're fun. You know, when I, when I beat, a, beat a dungeon, it's like, oh, cool, you know, now to continue my adventure forward. Like, I don't end, in Zelda, I don't end off a dungeon, like, panting heavily and being like, huh, I can't believe I got past that, man. He, he almost had me. Like, I was like a sliver of health left. I barely dodged that last strike of that sword ten times my size before I just sliced his ankle one more time and brought him to his knees. Man, I, I barely got past that. I've, I can't go through there again, man. I, it's, it's done with. I, I got the soul. I, I can move on. Man, like, it definitely a very different feel as far as as far as that goes, for sure. I have started playing Dark Souls 2. Like, I'm probably, I don't know, halfway-ish into it. But uh, I'm not really going to talk about it too much here. But I'm not even sure if I will make a video talking about that in the future. Because I don't think I... I don't have stuff bubbling in my mind that I need to get out the same way I had with this game. I'm Who knows how I'll feel by the time I finish it. Maybe maybe I'll feel compelled to make some kind of video. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, right now I do plan on just playing Dark Souls 2 and 3. And then I will probably go to Sekiro because I do already have that on my Steam library. And we'll probably move on to Elden Ring after that. I think I heard like some DLC... Or expansion kind of thing came out for Elden Ring, which people are pretty excited for. So, and just in general, I've heard a lot of good things about Elden Ring. I didn't even, didn't even really know it was a Souls game when I first heard about it. <laughs> like, although that was true for pretty much any game that wasn't Dark Souls. Like, I heard about the Elden Ring being good. I heard about Sekiro being good. I heard about Bloodborne being good. I really do hope Bloodborne comes to PC someday, <laughs> so I can play it in glorious F, you know, 60 FPS and all that on my. 1440p monitor monitor but um you know fingers crossed on that one but yeah i heard about those games i heard they were good i did not know they were all kind of like under the same souls born kind of a banner so you know my mind was pretty blown when i when i learned about that but uh, i do plan on playing all of them you know i mean i tend to get you have a ps4 so i could buy bloodborne for that and like if i do get through all the other souls games you know and we still have not had any kind of announcement for bloodborne on pc i'll probably just cave and do it but, like, we, we, we've had PlayStation, PlayStation games come to PC recently. Like, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, I think, was announced. And, like, definitely playing that one. Like, without doubt, I'm playing that. So, it's not impossible, right? I know there's Demon's Souls as well, which I think is for PlayStation 3. And the, I think they got a remake for PS5. So, uh, I, do not have, I do not have either of those consoles. <laughs> like, I have a PS4. I, I skipped PS3 entirely because at the, at the time it was quite expensive. I was... You know, I, I didn't have money. You know, I I, I was I was poor. I, I didn't get to have a PS3. It was like a legendarily expensive console when it came out. So I, I skipped PS3 even though I had a PS2. I technically had like two PS2s, but... But so never played Demon Souls. So again, unless it comes to PC, that one I'm definitely not not playing because I'm not, I'm not buying a PS5. I, I cannot justify it for, for so many reasons. So Demon Souls I probably will never get to play unless by some miracle it comes to PC, which I don't expect to happen, really. It's not impossible, but I have at least somewhat realistic hopes for Bloodborne, but n none at all for Demon's Souls. But we we'll love to play it if, if at all, if at all possible. But uh, I think I lost track of what I was talking about a little bit. But but uh, I'll, I'll probably just wrap it up here. So yeah, Demon D D Souls games. I plan on playing more of them because I, I really like Dark Souls One. It had its frustrations, it had its issues, but the very fun game that definitely stuck with me for sure. And Dark Souls Two, like. You know, I've been playing Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2, I've been kind of like watching videos that talk about Dark Souls 2, some of them be like, this is the worst game ever, it's worse than you remember, it sucks, burning with fire, they took a good game, they ruined it with Scholar of the First Sin Edition, I hate it, and I watched them videos like, hey, actually, Dark Souls 2 is really good, you, you just don't understand it, look at all these great mechanics that it had that it, they didn't use for future games, you know, it's not as bad as you think, it's actually a pretty cool game, you just... You know, and I agree with both those types of videos. It's, it's, it's kind of funny, but, you know, very, very interesting experience. Dark Souls 2, I, do, I definitely do not think I'm going to replay. Dark Souls 1, for sure, I'm going to go back to at some point and play through it. Dark Souls 2, probably not. Like, I don't hate it. Like, it's pretty cool, even though the, the health mechanic pisses me off, you know, reducing health. But I'm falling into the trap of talking about Dark Souls 2. I said I wouldn't talk, talk about Dark Souls 2 here, so I'm going to cut myself off before I get too deep into that. But, but yeah, Dark Souls, pretty cool stuff. If you haven't checked it out before, you might want to give it a try. And uh, that's pretty much all I had to say. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>